How and when did you learn of Ariel Castro's death? I uh, learned about it late last night, early morning. From whom? Uh, my phone was on and uh, I got a text from a media source that he died. Did you and Jay learn at the same time? I know that Jay found out about it last night as well, but we didn't communicate until this morning. What's the what was the first thing you did after you learned the news? Just try to wrap my brain around it. That uh, this has been a very surreal 120 days. Uh, things have happened extremely quickly, and uh, never ever fathomed that there would be a death, particularly so soon. Really, you didn't. Ex so this was a surprise to you. Well, look, we fervently fought against the death penalty. Right. And uh, it's, so it's hard to reconcile that fight with if it was his decision to take his life, which we don't know at this point. We understand that the prison officials have indicated they found him hanging, but we don't know the results of any investigation yet. Was there an autopsy? Has, has an autopsy been scheduled? I would imagine that there would be. Okay. Uh, you told the Today Show you and Jay are going to get to the bottom of it. What do you mean by that? Were you referring to the Corrections Department taking Castro off suicide watch? Well, I, I, I think that uh, there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed. And the first issue is, uh, was he on suicide watch? and what were the results of any forensic psychiatric evaluation that was conducted by the facility. And if there were indications, present indications, that he had suicidal ideations, then we need to determine what the protocol was uh, at the facility and if they adhered to their protocol. Do you know whether Corrections conducted forensics examinations on him? Well, we know that they uh, are required to do so uh, prior to the determination as to which prison they're going to be sent to. So uh, we know that that should have occurred or was uh, in all likelihood about to occur. But I would note that Jay and I did reach out to the prison officials earlier in August to try to have our own independently retained forensic psychiatrist interview Mr. Castro at the prison facility and our request for permission to do so was denied by the Ohio prison administrators. Was there an explanation? No. It was just a flat rejection? Correct. Did you pursue it? There's nothing to pursue. Um, are you, when you say going back to getting to the bottom of it, are you planning any kind of legal action against corrections? As, no. Does the family want you? No, let's be clear that uh, this interview is occurring uh, within 24 hours of his death. The family does not know any details, and neither do Jay or myself. And so the family is entitled to understand the details of what happened and if protocol and procedure were followed. So that's all we're trying to do is for the family to learn about how this could have happened and could it have been prevented in some way. There's uh, no likelihood of any lawsuit. This isn't a threat of litigation. This isn't, for all the cynics out there, this isn't about lawyers getting rich. This isn't about the Castro family members making money off of the system. It's just simply finding out what happened. We know that he died, and again, for all of the cynics out there, I'm sure there's elation, and they would probably like to hold the celebration of public square. But for family members, they are entitled to some closure. This isn't about Ariel Castro. This isn't about the victims. This is about his family who is devastated by the news. And what do you intend to get from, when you, when you get answers, is all you're looking for is closure? 
And it, for the family? Have you been retained by the family to do that? Well, I represent the family's interests. That never stopped? Correct. Okay. So the goal is to just try to provide them answers to the best of my ability and assist them in the process. It's, uh, look, when you look at the reality of this and what's happened over the last 120 days, they have been devastated to know that their family member kept such a secret and committed such horrific crimes over the last 10 years. They were devastated by the news, and that happened in May. So here we are. When the case broke. When the case broke. Right. He gets arrested in May, and here we are at uh, early September, and he commits suicide. Uh, this has been very traumatizing for them as well. So they have a right to have some assistance to try to find out what happened to give them some closure. Um, have you pursued any of the of the independent forensic probe on your own, despite the Department of Corrections' unwillingness to let you into the prison to examine Castro at the time? Did you, you, you told me last month that you were hoping forensic studies of Castro would, would unlock some clues to the predator personality and an autopsy, I figured, might shed some light on that. Are you working with, working with corrections to affect that? Is there anything you can do independently? Well, no, there's, unless the family decides to uh, retain a pathologist to perform specific brain studies, I, I don't believe that there's going to be uh, any ability to work in conjunction with any autopsy that's performed by the county where his death occurred. Mm -hmm. So in light of that, they'll do their normal autopsy and they'll determine the actual cause of death. As far as forensically understanding the predatory nature of him, it, it's, it, that's going to be an unanswered question. We know that he was extremely sick, uh, okay. that he had an evil mind, uh, but the causes of it uh, will never get answered, and so it will remain uh, unanswered for eternity. What, were, what was your gut feeling when you heard the news? I, I was just very saddened. Uh, and I, I'm just sad for the family, and I've been sad for his family for quite some time. I'm very empathetic with uh, their feelings in this case. Uh, they're at a loss for words as to how this could have happened, and I know that his mother is suffering tremendously. Mm -hmm. This just simply has not been easy for them, uh, in addition to obviously the victims of this case. And again, the victims are having to go through this today and over the next couple of days with questions, if they have any, uh, and a media onslaught once again. But it, ultimately, this gives uh, everyone finality. This does, right. Um, when was it, when was your last contact with Castro? Did you visit him in either, in either Cuyahoga County Jail or, or in Orient? I visited him the day after the sentencing hearing, so I think that that would be August 2nd. And, uh, here? And here in Cuyahoga County, uh, it was just, uh, Castro and myself, and, uh, we talked for about an hour, and I just, uh, wanted to get his feelings about uh, the sentencing hearing and what he wanted to do in the future in terms of a uh, psychiatric evaluation. What were his last words to you? Do you remember? He just thanked me for all my hard work and trying to understand his position and not judging him.